Jervis. We've made it back to the Red Rock Canyon visitor area. Uh, we're going to go inside and see what trails there are uh, for us to hike on. There's lots of trails up here. We just have to find the right one for us. It's a lot warmer than the last time we were here. Still windy, but not nearly as windy as before. And plus, with the warmer weather, it uh, feels a lot better. So uh, we're going to go inside, find a trail, and go on a hike. Here is one of the first hikes that you can take. Um, you can follow this trail on down, down, down. However, that's not the hike we're going to take. We're just going to stop here and take some pictures. But it's really cool with the sandstone or all the different directions that the grains are running. And that's just because of how the winds blew at the time the sand dunes were settling. And then up on the top, the red is from the iron-rich grains of sand that built the sandstone cliffs. This is the problem of walking down the trail. Going back, you gotta go back up a steep hill. All right, this trail is a little bit more our speed, um, a lot more level trail, but we're supposed to be able to see some pictographs, so uh, we're gonna go take some pictures of those. Sandstone just came apart right here like a jigsaw puzzle. Today, we are off to the Gila Cliff Dwellings. Say that 10 times really fast. And uh, it's gonna be uh, kind of a long drive up there. I think it's about an hour and a half drive up a windy road, but I hear it's gonna be beautiful. And then you get up to the visitor center, we're gonna check that out, and then actually go to the cliff dwellings where we can walk through some of the ancient dwellings. So I'm really looking forward to that. And, uh, and we'll uh, see what that's all about. So come along as we go to Gila.
Well, we made it to the Gila Cliff Dwellings, and uh, we're just starting on the trail. It was a windy, windy road up here. Uh, it took us about two hours to get up here, mainly because of how windy the road is. But now we're here, we're at the trailhead. Um, it's, uh, it's beautiful in here. Uh, it's about, it's a one hour loop or about a mile. And they said it's like walking up about 18 flights of stairs. So it can get steep in a couple of parts, but it's not that far. So we're gonna go ahead and walk up the trail and take a look at the cliff dwellings. Uh, this is where our people lived in about the year 1300. Um, so let's go take a look. All right, here we go. Here's the start of the trail. It's uh, supposed to be a steady climb up until you get up to the caves. Um, it is a loop, so we're going to do the whole loop. This way is steady climb. The other way was flatter, but then had a steep part at the end. So we thought if we're going to do the loop, it makes sense to do the steep part coming down rather than going up. <sighs> Already tired. really interesting to see how people lived 700 years ago. It's nice and cool in here. Really protected from the sun. As far as hikes go, I'd classify this as a moderate hike. For me, a trail we're on right now is flat. This is the easy part of the hike. 
there may be some hills up and down so I'd call that part easy but then when you get into the switchbacks and you um, have a, a lot of elevation gain that's what I classify as the moderate part now we've seen people come up here uh, one lady just passed us and she was carrying two oxygen tanks on her back and she was she was doing it she was gonna go up there you know I had surgery on my back in December and this is late March and so I'm feeling great I'm not certainly a model of fitness but um, I didn't see this as a hard hike at all we also you know with Barb um, she hurt her hip and she's got bad knees and uh, she was able to do it too she is saying that she wishes she had a hot tub but um, other than that I thought it was a fairly you know not really hard hike moderate so I'll just call it moderate certainly worth doing um, I would say this is a bucket list item uh, put this on your bucket list come see this um, 700 to 800 year old dwellings in the caves of Gila National Forest New Mexico well, we're spending the week at Rose Valley Ranch RV Park, and it's a really nice park. There's plenty of separation between the rigs, and uh, it's got some greenery and very quiet neighbors since it backs up to a cemetery. So it's a, it's actually uh, one of the better parks that we've stayed in. It's costing us two twenty five for the week for full hookups, and uh, we're about two hours away from the Helix Cliff Dwellings. To get to the cliff dwellings, there are two roads you can take. The more direct route, or I'll call the left route on the map, is um, a lot more direct as in going north and south. However, it's a very windy road. <clears throat> I would not feel comfortable taking my rig on that road, simply because some of the switchbacks are really pretty tight and I'd be worried about the length of the rig being able to make that corner. There are some campgrounds on the way up to the cliff dwellings, and uh, and they're really nice up there, uh, more primitive type campgrounds, but you would need a smaller rig to get up there. I'd say, you know, 34 feet or less, you'd be fine getting up there. This big rig, yeah, not so much. There is another route on the map, it's the road to the right, and that is not as windy, and so it's longer in distance, but you can actually travel faster because it's not so windy. That's a nice way to go through more farmland. Uh, the windier road is beautiful in that it's uh, mainly through the forest, and, it's, and then you have really nice views. The other route, more farmland, uh, so it has a different kind of beauty. However, there are some big dips in the road for uh, washouts, and I wouldn't feel comfortable taking the big rig that way either, simply because I'm afraid I'd bottom out. Again, a smaller rig, you probably have no problems, but a 45-footer, no way. So down here at the Rose Valley RV Ranch, it's a good option to stay here. It's a beautiful park, one of the best that we've stayed in, so I would not hesitate to recommend this place. So you can see in this spot how much space we have. This is the off-door side of the rig here. And there is quite a lot of space here before you get to your neighbor's, uh, I guess it's a fence here. But even on this side of the rig, uh, you have lots of space. And then on the door side of the coach, we have a little bit of privacy with the bushes in here. But also, when you come around here, you have a very nice sitting area. There's no picnic tables, but we brought our own. But it's a nice little protected area, and if the wind blows, uh, you've got these fences here that actually help protect you from being blown away. And there's Barb enjoying the sunshine. Yes, I am. And as far as overall length of the site, you can see there is absolutely no problem with a big rig. I'm standing on the road and still have lots of driveway left in order to get in here. Now because of the placement of that tree that's up front, I'll not be able to pull straight out. I'm going to have to um, back out of this site. But that's one of the considerations we made when we chose this site, simply because we like the privacy and backing out is absolutely no problem. And from this view you can see four other sites. Um, there's only one rig in the very, very far site down here. But um, other than that, 
uh, these sites are empty. It's of course the middle of the week too, but you can see how long they are. So big rigs, not a problem at all here. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Geezer Viz. So join us next time as we spend more time in Silver City and then we head out to Carlsbad, New Mexico. I'm really looking forward to the caves in New Mexico. Had a great time here. The cliff dwellings, they are awesome. You got to do it. Uh, so we'll see you next time in Carlsbad. Crap. Another quilt shop. Here's the last poor sucker who was waiting for his wife. Come rescue me, please.